Welcome to another VU Crew Live. I'm so grateful that you're here and you're joining us for this conversation. If you're wondering, hey, what is a crew? Crews are simply the small groups of our church. Right. It's where we get together and just talk about uh, the message from this past Sunday. Attaching scripture to everyday faith. I'm here with some friends and we're gonna jump right into the conversation. Mm -hmm. But what I want you to know is there's only two more crews left. Two more. For the year. Oh. There's oh, only two oh, crews no left way. in oh. 2023. We're done. So go to voochurch.com slash cruise and join a crew. It's never been easier and I promise you it will change your life. Well, as we mm -hmm. kick off this conversation, let's get your names and uh, I've got an icebreaker for you. You do? Yeah. I, you know, I really, really enjoy going out to eat. So I wonder, ah. for you, if you had the option of a genre of food, where would it be? Recently, I've been going, I've been on like a sushi kick. Oh. I have the best sushi restaurant recommendation yeah, so we're gonna, for you. Yeah, we're going to have to talk we're gonna chat <laughs> afterward. But for me, man, I'm looking for sushi these days. Yeah. yeah. I love that for you. What about you, Grace? Um, I really love Indian food. Really? I love no Indian food. Like Indian food I... is my number one food. No way. Yes. So High five. Cool. Yeah, there's like not many restaurants here. No, there's not, but there is one. We'll connect. Yeah, we'll talk. We'll, we'll we have a lot to talk recommendations, about. Recommendations, yeah. but Indian food is my favorite food. I love that. That's wonderful. Uh, for me, it's going to be Caribbean food. Uh, but I feel like that's such a big genre. Is there like a... It's a genre. Okay, all, all Caribbean yeah. food. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> because, and I like, because it's a vast genre. So you can go kind of go on the Latin side. You go West Indies. You really have a lot to play yeah. inside. Sean is cool. speaking I'm my language. Now. <laughs> especially, especially, like, some of the best food is, like, Chinese Jamaican food. Ugh. Wow. Wow. Ugh, just, that's a twist. That sounds I'm getting hungry. <laughs> I love that. Well, I was going to say, hi, I'm Mao. Love you guys. I was going to say sushi, but I want to be original and say that I just love to find a good acai spot. Ooh. Wow. I, I have one for you. Okay, yeah. You have Grace, you just, uh, you just Grace. like the restaurant plus. <laughs> you might have the end crew ladder. <laughs> Go work yourself. I agree. Yeah, but no, acai bowls all day, every day. Love yeah. them. Um, well, we've been in a, an incredible collection. I think so important. Financial literacy as it is in the kingdom of heaven, right? I think this is such an important subject and yeah. one that I don't think many have language for, frameworks for, perspective on. So mm -hmm. I have been so grateful for this collection that we're in. We're in part four right now. Pastor Rich shared a message this past weekend called How to Be Rich. Mm -hmm. I, I thought that. it was absolutely, <laughs> absolutely funny, right? Like a little bit punny, but um, I've just found myself, even this week, it's only been a couple days, but even thinking about, like, the visual that he used, right, called some people up and did a demonstration of the talents parable. Yeah. You know, God the Father giving talents according to their ability and saying, take care of my bride while I am gone. And when I return, I'm going to expect a return. Yeah. I want your first. So mm -hmm. good. So just seeing the visual aid of... I'm giving you the talents. Mm -hmm. yes. I'm only asking that you return 10% to my bride, the church. Yes. Right? There's like, there's almost an irresponsibility there, right? Almost contempt there mm -hmm. if I don't, mm -hmm. do you know? And I think connecting the dots and understanding that everything is God's and he has given us this provision yeah. makes returning the 10% just like significantly uh, eat. It's much more easy to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I've really appreciated it. You know, I, I, I think payday came in. Right? For those of us who get paid bi-monthly, right? You know, payday was just this week, right? So it's like, God, I'm going to give you the first. And yeah. Just really referencing that whole image um, was helpful. But let's get into the scripture. And I'm excited for us to navigate some of these questions. Yeah. 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 Our scripture comes from Matthew chapter 6, verses 19 through 21. It says, do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moths and vermin destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moths and vermin do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate one and love the other or you will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. So good. Those are great scriptures. Takes us into the main idea. This is just like 
a servant in Matthew 25 was entrusted with his master's money and multiplied it, God trusts us with his money so that we can steward it and give him a return on the investment he's made in our lives. Faithfulness results in fruit, fruitfulness. And how we decide to use what he's, we've been given shows God what he can trust us with. Scripture tells us no one can serve two masters. We either choose to serve the spirit of mammon, giving power to deceitful riches, or serve God, giving back to the one who gave us everything. And then I love the score here. It says, we can't submit to two things going two different directions. So good. It's really good. We can submit to two things going in two different directions. And one of those directions is serving money. We've all heard the saying, money is the root of all evil. But that's not actually true. The Bible says the love of money is the root of all evil. Our treasure doesn't follow our heart. It's our heart that follows our treasure. Mm. We good. have to choose where we invest our hearts. In the things of this world, which are temporary, or in the internal kingdom of God, where neither moth or rust destroy, and where thieves cannot break in and steal. The choice is ours. These three points. Money is powerful, but it's not God. When we choose money over God, it goes from being a tool in our hand to a master that we serve. Mm. And wherever, you're, wherever you get invested, you stay interested. Very good. And our main point is Jesus doesn't need your money. He wants your heart. So our first question for today is share a time when you trusted God with your finances and experienced a supernatural breakthrough. And I can just kick this one off. Um, my family moved to Miami from the Caribbean almost two years ago, actually, in January. And um, I don't know if you guys know this, but Miami's expensive. <laughs> <laughs> and coming from an island, I don't like to say like third world country, but, you know, the, the, the living means are a little less than Miami. Mm -hmm. And so we all honestly had to trust God in moving here and staying here and remaining planted. I remember when we were trying to find a house and we were just like, overwhelmed like how are we going to do this how are we going to afford this and we just continue to seek God on it and honestly he's exceeded our expectations mm. there's never been a day that we haven't had groceries that we haven't been able to do things that we want to do and even though two years ago it seemed almost impossible continuing to trust God continuing to be like hey you've called us here and so we know that you're going to provide for us even financially and really seeing him doing that to this day has been absolutely amazing that's wonderful for you, instead of coming to mind, I'm from here, there was a moment earlier in COVID where I had this opportunity to leave and save a lot of money. Um, but I heard guys saying, no, you're, you're, you're going to stay planted here. And at the time, I didn't have a job. So I'm like, Lord, like this apartment, as you said, is, is not cheap. You know, in fact, I've, I had felt a calling to really be where I was at. And it was a very stressful time, extremely, and financially. And I uh, didn't know when a, a, a new job was coming aboard considering the pandemic and um i just heard from lord it's like hey stay here and i put my trust into him i actually remember um spending essentially the last bit of i had for rent and i said you know what lord wow. the rest is up to you wow. yeah um and literally the wow. next week i had gotten a a, a, jo a job that's just been wow. so fruitful that's one of the best jobs job. I've, I've ever had so um, but it's really not just from the financial standpoint, but it's really from being here and seeing God move in my lives, uh, move in my life um, and in the purpose that he's had, had on my life. So I yeah. think that trusting him financially opened up what he's really had for me uh, yeah. in the supernatural, it's very good. divine it's way. Yeah. I think oftentimes God will put different seasons and scenarios in our lives that will mm -hmm. require us to step out in faith yeah. before mm -hmm. we can see his hand of favor on it. Very and true. for me... Um, I was still a college student at the time, and there was a study abroad program that I really wanted to do, but it mm. was extremely expensive. There was no way around it. Like, it was all the way in London, which is how oh, I fell wow. in love with London, if you know me. You know, yes. I love London. Yes. Yes. Um, and I just felt the Holy Spirit tell me, like, now you do this, and now you do this, mm -hmm. and now you do this, and just review every next step. And mm -hmm. I wasn't sure if he was going to provide financially or open up doors for me in different areas that mm -hmm. pertain to that specifically, yeah. but he did. And it, mm -hmm. But he, I wouldn't have seen his hands on it if, it didn't, if I didn't step out in faith, believing that yeah. you can do it. And you know what? Mm -hmm. If you don't do it, then that's okay. Um, but he always provides, mm -hmm. whether it's mentally, emotionally, financially, yeah. spiritually, 
um, as we're faithful to follow him, he's faithful to pour into us everything that we need. That's, great. That's really, really That's good. Yeah. I like how you said that. Sometimes we need to step out in faith mm -hmm. before we experience God's favor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I really like that, that framework. When I think about this question, I think about so many instances. I, I, I'd say probably one of the most recent mind-blowing is the fact that, you know, my wife and I were able to get married and get a home just this year alone. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, like that in and of itself is God's provision. The funny thing is, um, I believe it was this morning, it was one of the first text messages I sent. I took a screenshot, uh, sent it to my wife. Um, I, like, when we were planning our wedding, like, like trying to line up, because she was renting her apartment, I'm renting my apartment, and she's like, well, when do we want to get married? And we're like, well, you know, your lease is going to end at this day, my lease is going to end at this day, like, how do we coordinate it? And it just got to a place where it's like, man, I don't know if we can make this work. Mm -hmm. And so ultimately what ended up happening is we take, we, take a, we, take a, we take the risk of just trusting God with he's gonna provide for property. So what look to, I'm just, we're just gonna rent until we can figure it out. So we'll, God, well maybe God can show up for a property. Mm -hmm. And so we start looking for properties, we're taking tours of properties and we find one, we just both feel like this is it. So we go, okay, the problem with that is I, I would have had to acquire it prior to the, like my lease ending. Yeah. Breaking your lease comes with a cost. Mm -hmm. Yes. Breaking your lease comes with a cost. And so, um, so we just followed that and said, well, God, if this is your will, then we'll do it. That's long story short, we get the property. This is now like four to six months ago. And just today, on my calendar, I had noted when my term was supposed to end. I just do it every year because when you have a lease, like no, I just want to no, know where no, I'm at. No. Yeah. Lease. This morning, lease officially would have ended yeah. wow. on my last place, which was a 1-1 in the heart of Wynwood, which is a very nice location, a beautiful furnishings, all that, but it just didn't, it wouldn't fit the next season. Yeah. Yeah. So because I just trusted God was saying maybe, mm -hmm. just maybe, and that came with its cost, mm -hmm. I was able to, we were to get the property, the property has been developed and has amazing. appreciated over the value yeah. that I had to spend wow. to break Amen. the lease. Look and at that. Look just at that. our personal health yeah. And our relationship is just in such a much better place mm -hmm. because we have a home versus trying to figure out two people in a one-one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, and you know, ladies need a bathroom. <laughs> you know, you cannot be fighting when it comes to a bathroom. <laughs> and so really, God really has blessed our lives, our relationship, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and our yeah. home has been a place where we can build community. Mm -hmm. right? Because we decided to, hey, God, we're just going to trust. Yeah. You're going to provide. And he did. Wow. Wow. That's incredible. I yeah. love that. Mm -hmm. I'm going to pitch a second question to you guys. And it says, how does knowing that your heart follows your treasure now influence your financial choices and priorities? Uh, I, I love this biblical truth, really. Because um, for me, it's kind of the, the, the framework of where I want to put my heart, right? If I want my heart to be aligned with God, which yeah. is what I do, yeah. I start pouring into what God has, yeah. right? Specifically inside of this house. Um, and um, I've, I've, I've just seen it in my own finances. Um, I'm looking back um, where, and not just fi finances, but like it's about where you're investing. The areas that you invest in, you're going to be more interested in. Yeah. Um, and so I've seen that in my life. Like where's my time most spent? Those are the things that I've seen from a heart standpoint that I've been more invested in, right? Um, I've been talking to a bunch of friends from a few years, like, uh, I'm a big sports guy. I grew up in it. I did. I got masters in, in sports management and stuff like that. Sports. But um, I, but I, I, was, I was talking to, or actually last month I was talking with a friend um, about something, and I was like, "Oh man, I don't really like Sean. You haven't paid attention to it that much." And I'm like, "I I enjoy sports, but I have not in, no longer as invested into that anymore. So right. I've just practically seen that. Yeah. And it's the same thing when it comes to my faith. Mm -hmm. Am I investing into the areas of God's purpose on my life in God's house? And I've seen that as I do that, I'm more invested from my heart standpoint in those areas. Yeah. I think that we, we make a decision to follow Jesus, at least for me, when mm -hmm. I made that decision at 17 years old, mm -hmm. I didn't fully understand that it required all of my life. It yeah. required my entire surrender. Yeah. And okay. you know what? I'm grateful because I wonder if I would have made 
the safe decision. But I see how the Holy Spirit has moved in my heart yeah, and transformed yeah. mm -hmm. my desires. And I always go back to that decision and that moment that I remember so clearly and vividly, that moment that I had with the Holy Spirit, just saying, I give you my entire life yeah. and you can use it as you please. Very good. And even now, like I find myself looking back in that moment and thinking like, no, I, I chose to make this decision and it's a decision that's going to seep into every area of my life, whether yeah. it's financially, emotionally, mentally, like if I want to be more like Jesus and live a life with him, then it's going to require me to sacrifice mm -hmm. the things that I may not want to. And as I surrender the things that I may not want to surrender, I can be confident that God's going to change my desires yeah. and change my heart and align yeah. my heart with his because that's what he does. He mm -hmm. transforms us yeah. from yeah. the inside and it's yeah. a process of sanctification. And so mm -hmm. um, I think it, it applies to our finances too, I think for a lot, a lot of people, and at least for me, like I didn't start tithing or investing financially um, until a couple years down my time with God, mm -hmm. a couple years into being a Christian. And at first, it was kind of like reluctantly, reluctantly giving. Yeah, it was yeah, kind of yeah. like I'm yeah. gonna do this because yeah. I. I feel like I kind of like I'm there now, and like I'm yeah. gonna invest in this. Yeah. And now it's like. I give from like an overflow and like mm -hmm. a place of joy, but that didn't just happen in a moment. It happened with like, again, like walking in obedience to like what the Lord mm -hmm. has called us mm -hmm. to do. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. That's wonderful. I think for me, honestly, it helps. Like I'm a very big planner and I love to just like navigate the things of my life. And so knowing that my, fin my finances are going to follow or my heart's going to follow my finances just helps me like goal setting, like knowing mm -hmm. like, oh, this is where I want to be in three years. This is when I want to be great. in five years. Then this is where my money needs to go. If I want to mm -hmm. go in this direction, I can't send my money that direction. Yeah. It's not going to yeah. work out. And I've realized that so many times that like we're praying and we're asking, hey God, like why, why am I not the place where I thought I was going to be or why am I not here and why am I in another place? It's because this is where I've been investing in the entire time, mm -hmm. but my mouth mm -hmm. is saying something else like, God, I want to be financially secure. Come God, I want to go mm -hmm. to Spain in three years. I yeah, don't yeah, know. Yeah. But like you're investing in these things that your heart's not, your, what you're saying is not aligning. Yeah. Yeah. That means your heart's going there. Like, yeah. oh, my heart's going yeah. on this shopping yeah. spree right now when yeah. I want to be financially yeah. secure. Yeah. And so it's really just helped me um, forecasting my life and planning yeah. with God rather than against God. Um, I think it's been That's a really great. special Oof. time for yeah. me. That's really it's really about integrity, right? Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. Do I really believe the things that I say that I believe? Are the things mm -hmm. that I say are important to me actually important to mm -hmm. me? You know, I think it's for a lot of times I'm like, man, this is important to me that I, I'm a part of this, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. I invest in this. And then I look back, like, well, did, well, did I do that? And mm. how consistently did I, did I do that? Is and, the math mathing. Right. That's is the math mathing. Math 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 and so, I, I, you know, for a large part um, of my life, I, I, you know, I'm one of the few people in my family that works in, like, you know, the for-profit sector. A lot of mm. people in my family, they work in nonprofits, whether it be abroad in missions, uh, prison ministries, mm -hmm. and uh, those who have been uh, in sex trafficking situations. Mm -hmm. so they've really given their lives to help people. So I'm one of the few that, like, has a for-profit. And I always, I love that, that I get to, generate some extra cash flow that I can invest back in them. And I was like, well, how am I doing that? You know, like, mm -hmm. let me go ahead and look at the, my balance sheet, you know, how mm -hmm. am I doing mm -hmm. that? And so I go, well, I need to be more intentional with the things I say are, I'm important, that are important to me, because these are things that I've been praying into that God has been blessing. Mm -hmm. And have I been a good steward to the things I say That's God I'm important to? So when, when I'm looking at my, my budget or my disposable income or whatever it is, my income mm -hmm. in general, I'm going, how am I being intentional, mm -hmm. making sure that I'm supporting the people and the projects that I have already said are important to me? Yeah. And so for me, it's been a good heart check um, and, 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 and balance to the things yeah. that are important. Yeah. That's great. That's amazing. That's, That's so wonderful. Good. That's wonderful. It takes us into our second point, the second area um, of, of serving, which is serving God. Right, that's the direction that we want to go to. It says, whether it's money or possessions, everything we have is given by God. In the Bible, one of the first commandments God gives is to be fruitful and multiply. This means that we're entrusted with maximizing what God has given us. Or what he's given us so he's glorified. As we faithfully maximize what's in our hands, God will faithfully multiply it. And uh, love's 
verse here out of Matthew 25 says, for everyone who has more will be given and he will have an abundance. But from the one who has not, even when what he has will be taken away. Uh, three points that we have here. First one is that God won't multiply what we don't maximize. Uh, second one is faithfulness results in fruitfulness. And third one is faith does not maintain, it multiplies. Come on. That's great. That is wonderful. And then we're to value money like an owner, but care for it like a steward. Great. Which takes us to our first question, which is have you ever focused more on what others had versus what was in your own hand? I think we all have at a point, but uh, follow up on that is how did you recenter your focus on maximizing what God gave you? Um, and what comes to my mind in this question um, is actually has to do with, with serving God. Uh, about a year ago, a little bit more than that, I got the amazing pleasure to go to a prison ministry conference. I didn't even know they had those things, right? In fact, it was, apparently it was the first one. Um, and it was over in, in Dallas, Texas. And it was with one of our partners, and they had just invited some of the, the key churches that they've partnered with. Uh, it was maybe about 100 people at this conference. So it wasn't huge, but I um, got to meet this other church, and they had a robust ministry. I mean, the guy was talking about how they're in like 18 different institutions. And I was like what? Like you're yeah. doing all this work for God? Like yeah. that's amazing. That's great. And instantly I was like, man, I would love if, not just for me, but I would just love if that was the story. If, if prison care had that level of, a, of an impact, right? But uh, what I was doing was looking at what somebody else had, not what wow. God had already given. And what we've been able to do with prison care was already phenomenal. Like he was listening to me. He was like, wait, what y'all were doing that? And um, it was interesting in that conversation. He actually said that like, they kind of overgrew themselves. Like he's like, yeah, we're kind of not really, this is not really sustainable. So that already knocked me down a little bit from um, seeing that too much. But really I had to refocus on saying, hey God, the way, the area that you've planted us is different than there, yeah. right? Because where they're up is further up north and even just their criminal justice system, like their department of corrections, the way they handle stuff yeah. is way different than here in Florida. So we couldn't even do Right, even from a logistics standpoint, we don't have as many institutions as close yeah. as they do. We yeah. can't stream; they're allowed to stream, right. right? And so, like, just from a practical standpoint, I had to like ease back and see what is it, but then have a conversation with God and saying, "Lord, um, allow me to continue to be content in what You've given me." That's beautiful, That's great. right? Yeah. And 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 continue to pick up the phone that You're calling me at, and not to look at someone yeah, else's yeah. That's yeah. conversation that You're having with them. Yeah. That just helped me to, to refocus and and. I think the main thing was really giving thanks. That yes. first and foremost helped me to, to refocus, yeah. but yeah. also looking at just practically, like, Sean, stop trying to do things that you really will not be able to do. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. I, I think about that, this question, I think I've probably felt it in one way or another in mm -hmm. every area of life. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Oh, you know, you know, how come I can't be 6'5 and drunken, you know, <laughs> shooting threes from like half court, you know? Right. You know? Why didn't I get selected for the promotion? Or yeah. how come yeah. I don't have the three kids but before I'm 30 or, mm -hmm. you know, how come I wasn't selected mm -hmm. to speak at whatever the situation is? I think I felt it in so many areas across my 36, 37 years of life, right? Mm -hmm. It's not just, it hasn't just been the money sphere, right? Yeah. I think we yeah. all have ambitions and aspirations, goals, dreams, and things like that. What has always helped me, what has m mostly helped me keep that in check is understanding that God's way will always be better than my way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Always. And so when I find that stirring up in me, mm -hmm. I go, That's God's great. way, God's will, God's glory. Mm. That That's is like great. a very active yeah. and offensive prayer that I yes. pray yes. to guard my heart and my mm -hmm. mind. Because mm -hmm. you can easily start making these assumptions and be feeling looked over and that's not fair, like whatever that means, right? Mm -hmm. Like, And so, no, no, no. In time, in God's time, well, what's for me will be mine. Yeah. yeah. That's it. Yeah. It doesn't really matter, right? It's if I, so if I see something, I can admire it and mm -hmm. celebrate it and go, oh God, I, there's something like that that resonates in me. Yeah. 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 Whatever that is, can you let that happen in my life? I mm -hmm. want it in your mm -hmm. time, right? Yeah. So even thinking about getting in a relationship, you know, I'm now two years in this relationship. That mm -hmm. means when I was 33, 34 is really when I started in my relationship with my wife. Mm -hmm. But imagine how many people I watched get married and have kids. And it's I'm like, wow, like LT and Sophia, they're like 20, 
They're like 23. They're, they're combined they're, they're, age. They're a little bit more than 20. I'm like older than their combined age, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and so, but like, I mean. We love y'all. Yeah, no, so we, much. Absolutely love you. But like the so beauty much. is, so, but look, if yeah. I'm comparing yes. and mm-hmm. I am like doing, I can't celebrate them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I can't honor yeah. and observe yeah. That's great. and yeah. be and be in awe by what God has done in their life. Absolutely. Because I'm like, well, why not me, God? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And that's not the heart that God has required. That's Absolutely. beautiful. So for me, it's very, it's a very active and offensive thing. God's, God's way, mm-hmm. God's will, mm-hmm. God's glory. Yeah. Beautiful. I don't want it my way, I don't want it my will, and I don't want it for my glory. That's beautiful. Yeah, that's really good. I yeah. think of having that kind of turning point in my life. Um, I got the opportunity to go to like the top, private school in Trinidad for high school. Oh, right now. Um, but I also got the opportunity to be there on scholarship. Oh, right now. <laughs> it, was very, it was very, very expensive. Like my um, expensive? Yeah, actually. Oh, wow. It really was comparable yeah. to my car. By the way, you are, you are very intelligent. Right? <laughs> Thank you. Like, you express yourself very, very well. It's all making sense right now. Oh. <laughs> the math is math thing. The oh. math is actually math thing here. Oh, I was having a the mal is mal. I'm like, how is mal so, how is mal like 40 years old? <laughs> Like, so articulate. You're so articulate. I'm just like, very impressive young woman. Thank you. I appreciate that. We're going to say that was God's anointing and not this school. Exactly. Yeah. I'm actually getting to that because growing up in that school, well, I, I got there when I was 16. Um, everybody, or the majority of the people in that school, they were very, very privileged kids. Like, they were either, like, from other countries, like, they were international students, mm-hmm. um, or they're just very well-off families in Trinidad. Mm-hmm. And so I often found myself comparing, yeah. like, their experiences to mine. Like, they were going to Spain randomly in the middle of the school year. Or, like, they had a Mercedes-Benz when they turned 17. And I was just mm-hmm. like, God, like, <laughs> hey, mm-hmm. remember me? Mm-hmm. And um, I think that was actually the point in my life where the materialistic side of me was really revealed. Yeah. And I had to humble myself before God. Mm-hmm. And, but it was also the point in, the life, in my life when I realized how called I was and how much God had put on the inside of me. And the moment that I stopped looking at all the materialistic things that other people had is when I really started seeing the things that God had put inside of me. Yeah. That's the great. giftings that I had, yeah. the wisdom that he's been able to give me. Mm-hmm. And that was really the moment that I started pouring into myself and pouring into my gifts and serving in church and yeah. mm-hmm. really just realizing that what what this message is all about, that we we have material things and it's amazing and it helps us have a great experience on earth. But yeah. more than that, God has yeah. put things on the inside of us that are going to get heavenly rewards. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's mm-hmm. the things mm-hmm. that I want to be pouring into. And those are the yeah. things that I want to be maximizing. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Nice. I love how you said, Sean, earlier how you found joy Mm -hmm. in contentment. Mm -hmm. I think that's Mm -hmm. so powerful. Um, Being content with who you are and the way that God's equipped you and what he's filled you in with and the gifts and talents that he has for you. For me, like, when I first gave my life to Jesus, I would always look at worship leaders and think, like, I want to be a worship leader. And then I would always try to sing and be like, well, <laughs> <laughs> it seems like this is not going to happen for me. Because, audience of one. Jesus. <laughs> because I, but I had this, like, yearning desire in my spirit, like, to be a worship leader. And mm-hmm. I, like, it just never kind of went away. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And after a couple of years, like, I got the revelation that, like, God has called me to be a yes. worship leader. Yeah. It just doesn't look the way that I thought it would yeah. look. Yeah. Like, Preach. my entire Preach. life could be now. an image. Yeah, of worship. Come on, come on. Um, and so it's like even just shifting your perspective of mm-hmm. thinking like I don't have enough or I don't have what it takes. It's like, no, God has actually given you exactly what you need yeah. and mm-hmm. more than enough. Mm-hmm. And I believe that the life that I live is a life of worship yeah. and yeah. It, it impacts lives so much greater than what I, what grace could have done mm-hmm. with singing on mm-hmm. a stage yeah. because that's not what God called me to. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so that was a revelation yeah. that I had. Yeah. And I okay. want to confirm that, that, that. I mean, the way you yeah. lead and the way that you Thank serve you. and yes. the amount mm-hmm. of lives that you touch with the demand from mm-hmm. an administrative perspective Thank and you. from a relational management perspective, yeah. you do it with such grace. Yes. yes. You tease it's graceful. It is. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I, it, it is truly it's encouraging, mm-hmm. it's inspirational, mm-hmm. Thank you. and, it, and it, it motivates the people around you to stay in the fight mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and to be excited about what's next. Yeah. So I, yeah. I want to affirm that 100%. Thank you. Absolutely. My heart is Ooh. melting. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. It's so true. Um, but it kind of takes us to the second question that we have here. So in those moments, what are the practical steps you can take or that we take to maximize what God has entrusted us, whether it's money, possessions, relationships, other resources. Um, 
one of the practical steps I know for me it's similar it's having that self-talk um, and, and there's two things there's one that God entrusts you or God puts people in your life or puts you in places because he entrusts you to love them well yeah to me that's one of the, like the very formative saying I'll, I'll say to myself because it helps to give me confidence right and and God's given me this. Sometimes I might feel insecure, so I don't maximize what God's given me. Just like the talent guy had one. He's like, oh, I don't want to mess it up. I'm just going to keep him yeah. hide it, right? And here, God, I didn't lose it. Here you go back. I'm like, no, no, no. God has created me, has gifted me, yes. has anointed me, and has puts me in places because he's like, Sean, you're not the person to be my image bearer in mm-hmm. those moments, right? And so just knowing that helps me to be able to take down those, yeah. those moments. Um, and then to actually move forward and maximizing it because also our God's not a God that's in the business of wasting his blessings. Yeah. yeah. So if he's trying to pour into me, like I need to do something with it or else yeah. that faucet might not fully dry up, yeah. but it's not going to open up and, yeah. and to flow through me. So really it's a lot of having those, those two quotes just helped me to uh, remember um, my my blessing and my position in, in, in those moments. Yeah, that's really good. Yeah. I I definitely think, at least for me, something that I've been exercising a lot more is just gratitude for what mm-hmm. I have. Mm-hmm. Waking up every morning and thanking God for the big things and the things that he's blessed me with, but also the places that I'm at and the places that I want to see him grow in. It's really when you think about growth, the things that have the most potential to grow are the things that aren't that small, that, that are small. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. Things have a cap in growth yeah, in life. Like speaking margins right now. Logistic, like logistic. I'm not going to be smart right now. But like, <laughs> just thinking about it, like the little things have the most potential to be big. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so the little things so in my life have the most potential to explode yeah, one wow. day and wow. see the supernatural wow. growth of God. Yeah. So I'm going to thank God for that seed. I'm going to thank him for that mustard seed. Because yeah. one day it's going to grow into a massive tree and I'm going to be like, how that's, did you do that? That's so profound. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. Wisdom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And like, the reality is that, that God... <laughs> That God, God hasn't just left it entirely up to you either, right? He's like, I'm yeah. here to co-labor yes. with mm-hmm. you with the things that I've given you, yeah. fueled by the power of my oh, spirit, spirit. Yes. Yes. right? So yeah. it's never like we got to do it on our own and in our own strength with our own creativity. God's going to give it all to us. It's about saying, God, help me to increase. And well, maybe I don't, I don't know what that means. I'm doing everything. Well, hey, God, what am I missing? Because mm-hmm. 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 I know you've got a way for me here. Maybe I can't see it. Can you help my eyes yeah. to see the way, right? So for me, it's exciting because it becomes an adventure. It becomes a mission. I think God is all about growing us. Mm-hmm. But growth can get wide. Mm-hmm. It can go high. And it can go deep. Yeah, right? that's mm-hmm. good. So in different seasons and areas, like we're talking about relationships. We're talking about money. We're talking about uh, objects that, we, that, that, are, that have been entrusted to us. Like maybe, maybe God wants us to have a deeper heart. Mm-hmm. understanding or deeper mind understanding or or better ear for his word mm-hmm. right because when he takes us to the next level mm-hmm. like we're, our ears are going to have to be able to more clearly identify his voice because maybe the noise is going to increase yeah. when we get yeah. to that space yeah. Yeah. so there's an there's always Oof. a way to maximize the season it's not always a numerical mm-hmm. on paper balance sheet ledger mm-hmm. P&L, that is where you'll be able to find how am I maximizing? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, like I think about, you know, when COVID was here and, you know, a lot of people lost their jobs. Yeah. Now, if you're measuring your growth in that season by your income, it's easy to feel defeated. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But you know what I also saw? I saw people that were placed in a tough situation that said, God, yeah. you still have my yes. Mm-hmm. That's so, so that good. means, <laughs> so, you know, like the, the, I forget, it's some silly movie, but it goes, you know, uh, and I've seen a, a meme about it too. It's like, you know, you're surrounded, put your hands up. And the guy goes, what do you mean? So I can attack on every side? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and so like, you know, you know, people were put in a position where I've lost my income, I've lost right. my job. Mm-hmm. And how they responded was, so what you're saying, I've got more time to serve, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And not wasting in the waiting, yeah. right? And Ooh, not that's getting, good. Yeah, not not lo- not losing sight of what God is doing because you're not sure what the next step is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You just you know like knock in the door. We answer. Sometimes that first door don't open. Mm-hmm. Sometimes so knock on the next door. Knock on the next door. Keep knocking and knocking and knocking. When I when God <coughs> finds me, I pray that it is that I have not stopped knocking. Right. I, that's I, so good. And I think it's in those spaces where are, are you continuing to knock in your money? Are you knocking in the things that you have? Are you knocking in your relationships? Are you knocking uh, in your in whatever resources that God's given you? No. How yeah. many knocks you got? Yeah. <coughs> Did you just have the one? Maybe some. Maybe maybe a measure in the KPI is endurance. Mm. Mm-hmm. Is it only mm-hmm. going to work out? When if it, things are going well. When it well, works out. Mm. 
It's only, is that when it works out? Because mm -hmm. where I'm bringing you, you need to have a little bit more endurance. Endurance is yeah. in depth growth. Ooh. Yeah, that's really because good. Scripture yeah. talks about yes. consider it pure joy to go through trials and tribulations, right? Yeah. So that you may mm. be complete, not yes. lacking anything. Exactly. And if you need Come help, on. ask, and I will Goodness. give. Right? Yes. And so I that's think, great. I, think I, I, I get excited about this <laughs> because God has given us a billion opportunities yes. yeah. to maximize the mm. moments that we're in. And if we build a habit of maximizing, like squeezing all the juice mm -hmm. out of the season that we're in, it's just going to become like muscle reflex yeah. mm -hmm. in the various Come areas on. that we're in. And we're just going to see God keep moving and moving and moving. And one day you're going to wake up 10 years later and go, how did that become this? You go, oh, man. Yeah. Wow. You know. So good. I'm Absolutely feeling that moments. line. I hope when God finds me, I'm still knocking. Mm -hmm. If you hear me say that, just close your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> That's I love funny. This. Let's jump into our summary. Yeah. Our summary says, the words that we want to hear Jesus say when we get to heaven are, well done, good and faithful servant. If we want to hear these words in heaven, we can start by sowing into the principle of stewardship in our earthly lives today. We must live as a servant that is well done, good and faithful staying submitted to God and embodying the spirit of excellence. We must choose to finish what we start, live with integrity and honor, and stay consistent through life's peaks and valleys. When we catch the revelation that we are borrowers and not owners, we can live a life that magnus, mag, magnifies all that God has for us. Amazing. Mm -hmm. We never end a crew without a call to action. And so this week's call to action is take some time to study the parable of the talents in Matthew 25, verses 14 through 30. Reflect on how this parable applies to you personally. Choose one area of your finances you would like to, be, you, you would like to better steward and share your reflections with a trusted friend. Love this conversation. I love you guys. We're going to prayer us out. If you have any prayer requests, drop them in the chat. Our team would love to pray for you. Mm -hmm. We're going to pray corporately. Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for this opportunity, God. We thank you for this collection of talks that's continuing to equip us, Lord God, in knowing how to steward your money, God. Bless this connection. Let it walk with us through the rest of our lives, God. Bless the people online that are viewing God, the prayer requests that they're considering even now, Jesus. Would you be with them, God? Would you continue to remind them that all they have is all they need? We mm -hmm. love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 And amen. Thank you so much for being here with us and joining uh, us for this conversation. Uh, we have a whole lot of these crew lives that are there on YouTube for you to join as well. Go over to the live section of the drop down uh, on the YouTube page, and you're going to see hundreds of crew live conversations that you can jump into. Even mm -hmm. more importantly, Get into a crew of your own. Yeah. I promise you, it will change your life. We love you. We'll see you next week. Peace. Hey, this is Rich and Don Shree Wilkerson, and we want to say thank you so much for watching and engaging with today's content. Maybe today you want to make the decision to follow Jesus. Why don't you pray this prayer with me? Dear Jesus, today I choose to entrust my life to you. Forgive me of my sins. Make me a new creation. I love you. In Jesus' name, amen. We're celebrating with you the decision that you've made, and we want to walk this journey out alongside you. Yeah, and if you just prayed that prayer, why don't you go ahead and follow the prompts that are on the screen right now? We're so glad that you took some time to watch today's message. Do us a favor. If it encouraged you, if it impacted you, go ahead and share this. And if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to the Voo Church YouTube channel so you can continue to get more content like this. We love you guys, and we're declaring the best is yet to come. come.